We've got some fresh new young talent doing some things that I know you haven't heard before. One, two, three, listen. Welcome to Finances, your home for all things financial, investment, money, and lifestyle. Hosted and curated by the very talented team of certified financial planners and Burke Britain Financial Partners. This is This Week in Fine Answers. Ben. JB, how are you? Good, mate. 15 minutes today. Let's nail it. Screw the bank. You sent me a TikTok earlier in the week. It got us talking about all things what banking did, and mortgage. What is TikTok? First, for you, you're probably an introduction into the world because we looked it up and I think you're probably in, maybe there's only about 5% of people your age and above actually on TikTok. What am I but, supposed uh, to be on? Instagram? I'm def- I think Facebook's for the real boomers and beyond. So. Do you want to talk about, let's intro it by saying what you saw and then how it led us down this conversation. Yeah, so a couple of people sent it to me. I'm sure plenty of people have seen it. It's we'll add it to the show notes. Uh, basically, there was, a, there was a bloke on uh, TikTok claiming that if you paid the bank a dollar a day that it would reset your interest uh, every day so you wouldn't get any compound and you could pay off your mortgage in five years, which, again, there's been some fact-checking. There's been a bit of some debunking whatever you want to call it but um again some of it, some of his points 100 percent make sense but i think there's probably a little bit of uh, gray area in the re- actual reality of it all as well yeah i think he, the the questionable bit was you won't have to pay any interest at all and your mortgage will go from 25 years to five years what i liked about it is that it got people thinking like as much as it was likely bullshit even though there's a small part of me that still wants to do a little bit more research on it uh it actually gets you to think and it probably prompts us to think, why is that so appealing to people? Yeah, it was a little bit tinfoil hat sort of set up. But um, I think everyone's trying to get ahead, aren't they? And you want to try and find a little shortcut, a little bit of freebie. Uh, sometimes when it's too good, sounds too good to be true, it probably is. And there's probably a little bit of that in it. But at the same time, the, the, the simple things about paying more frequently, sort of trying to knock that interest on the head, it makes sense, especially now with rates on the rise. So um, again, that... Plus, with some conversations I've had with friends, family, clients around, you know, what's your mortgage looking like? It's a bit of a topical thing at the moment. Everyone was sort of uh, flexing on how low they locked it in at. Yeah. Uh, and now everyone's a bit more guarded about, oh, oh, my bank sort of slid me up pretty hard here. So <laughs> I think um, now it's interesting to see what, what are people doing about that. Uh, and that was probably what led me to very loose agenda for today so as well you, you had a couple of notes here it's time to hit the bank up so let's talk to that point about it, it really is it's time to take some control yourself and if you want to make some change uh, you've got to take some action and it's not necessarily that hard to do these things and i think that was the key thing i thought of it is just the simple you know time to benefit ratio and this is pr- pretty good so thing I scribbled down and I think I'm probably guilty of this is I'm pretty loyal in terms of just lots of things in life the banks aren't loyal the banks don't give a shit about you so don't feel like you've got to tie yourselves to them and oh, I've been with them for 20 years go to them you don't have to leave but you can always threaten to leave and it, and sometimes that's enough so very simply I think the whole premise of what I wanted to get people to think about today is what's your interest rate at the moment when did you last ask the bank why it's that and what can they do for you so i've had a couple of people in the last week just go and ask the question now they might drop their rate by half a percent they might give them a cash back offer um, at worst they'll say no you're already at the best rate and then you can consider your options but it might be a 10 minute call and they're dropping rates by like half a percent at the moment now yeah, quick maths on that let's say your mortgage is half a million dollars, 500,000, probably pretty run of the mill now. Um, half a percent reduction is about $50 a week interest saved for a, let's call it a 10 minute phone call. It's pretty good value for money. It's exceptional value for money. Again, the time spent to the reward is uh, is in good ratio. What else, when you're calling them up, what, what are pe- what's the conversation that people actually need to have? Is there any prep work that people should be doing before that they jump on the phone? Know what your rate is, know mm-hmm. what you've got, um, probably the more informed you are about your own situation is probably going to mean you're a little bit more confident about what you're asking. And if you have to scribble it down in front of you to go, this is what I am at the moment, this is what I'm asking for, ask it, be confident. You know, If you have to say, oh, look, I'll have to have a look around then. Uh, the banks are in a really high retention phase at the moment, so they're not that keen to write a heap of new loans, but they're pretty comfy 
to keep what they've got. So that's why they're coming to the party with these things. Um, they know the market out there. People are, people are tight, so people will move if they can get a better rate. Yep. And the banks want to keep you there, so they will they will let, they will bend a bit. So don't be afraid to to push for that. Yep. When I spoke to my bank recently, and uh, they asked me if I had any other comparative rates. So they wanted me to do a little bit of homework. So, but I, I knew that, and so I did. Yeah. I actually just sort of ha- had a bit of a shop around to market. I happened to know a few brokers, so uh, had a look at what the rate is, comparable, sent that to the bank. It's a really good way to be prepared. And if you have a broker, uh, use them. Like if you, if yep. you did your loan to a broker, it doesn't mean you've got to go and call you know, Bankwest or CBA or whoever it is. Go to the broker and say, look, can you, can you do some work for me? Uh, you know, ultimately, they're getting a little bit of a clip along the way to be linked to that loan so don't feel like they're doing something for nothing uh, and if they think look you know what you are better to actually move somewhere else it's a good opportunity to go through that process so ask you if you've got a broker go to your broker first let them do the work they know what to say outsource that if you don't have a broker you probably should think about having one but also don't be afraid to call your bank and ask the question yeah and you don't need to be loyal to your bank but one of the, one of the great places to be loyal or where loyalty is shown if you find a good broker they're going to work for you yep. they're going to work for you they're not working for the banks they're working for you to actually find the best possible uh, opportunity the best possible deal for you i just wanted to touch on sort of mortgage prison yep um which is a bit of a you know horrible term but for a lot of people it's a reality sadly at the moment so what that is is they got a loan most of these probably fall in the last few years um everything looked sweet from a serviceability point of view. You probably had a, had 10 banks falling over each other to give you a loan. Uh, interest rates go up, things get a bit tighter. The banks, they're not really that keen in new business, more in a retention phase. Um, you've got no m- ability to move sideways. So you're actually locked in to that bank and ultimately whatever rate they so just explain that you. briefly about why people are stuck. What, why are people are, are stuck because of the rise in interest rates? Why does that mean that you're stuck with that bank? Yeah, so basically when, when the banks did their um, modelling on you, when you set the loan up, you had heaps of surplus cash flow. You were all good for them. They were pretty happy with you having you as a client. Uh, now when the rate has, say, doubled or more, that's eaten into your surplus, plus cost of living has gone up. So when they run their metrics across you, you're now you know, you're getting a bit close to the line on what they feel is a good, uh, comfortable position for them to be holding. So uh, as that happens, the banks say, oh, sorry, no, thank you. No, not not for us. Uh, And you can, for some people, you end up just locked into that one bank where you already are. In not in a great position to negotiate You've got not much power. And I think the key is when you do go to your bank, and the brokers are really good at this, is don't give too much away. Um, Just sort of... Again, just say, look, we're having a look around at the moment. Um, be confident. Uh, and that will, again, that should be enough to them. At least give you something. Don't go there and tell them you're stuck and we're struggling. Go in there and say, look, we're looking around. Yep. And, and make out that you go, well, we could pick up and move if we want to. The stuck and struggling conversation is really the last, Do not last conversation that. that we're having. That's the conversation when people are genuinely in financial difficulty and they, they've got no other option. But And that's a nasty spot to be. Yep. And again, mortgage prison is is going to be real for a lot of people um, so you got to do what you can so that's if you can you can manage to get that rate down the sooner you can then take a bit of uh, meat out of that loan and, and get it down the quicker you're probably going to be able to have the option to refinance too so uh, you've sort of you've got to work really hard when you're in that period and I think this is where we're finding that divide you've got the people who are a bit trapped at the moment uh, for those people they've got to really knuckle down get the cash flow tight take a big chunk of that loan out if they can and work hard on it to, to open up their options if you if you're on the other side of it it's time to sort of again you've got to be a bit greedy about it uh there's going to be opportunities yeah negotiate with the bank and part of it is awareness and actually knowing like i know you've talked about a couple of clients prior to this where you can them having awareness about what their income needs to be what their expenses need to be will actually put them in a better position when they actually go back to the bank in the future. But if you don't know that, you're sort of going in blind. So being informed, being confident, having information uh, at your fingertips when you're negotiating with the bank or when you're going to refinance is is super important. And if you don't have that, you need some support with that, go and see someone, go and see a broker, come and see us uh, so that you can be 
better positioned when you're negotiating with the bank. Yeah, definitely. And I think you know, it's easy for people to just let these things go in the past few years because rates were pretty low. So the difference between being on 2.15 and 2.25, you don't really notice it. But now we're literally looking at you're dropping like 10% of your of your, of your your interest rate. Like you're going from five and a half to five in some circumstances. I had someone last week who did that just from a conversation. And they said, oh, I didn't get any cash back, but dropped half a percent probably 50 bucks a week you've just saved so it's pretty good pretty good it's a sweet deal yeah so hit them up uh anything else on the mortgage front ben we still we, we might do another uh podcast on the guy the tiktok guy we're going to do a debunk yeah we'll have to do we might have to run out some of our own numbers on that it's interesting at the moment you get all the the thread of the debunkers and the the counter theories it's such an interesting place on any social media platform someone comes out with a theory that looks like you can beat the bank someone comes out and says oh, it's probably not as good as you think it is and then you read the comments and everyone's saying oh you just must be supporting the bank mm. like everyone's a bit angsty at the moment yeah I, I like the debate i think that the way to outdo bad ideas is to have better ideas and the conversation at least again it's prompted us to talk about it and do a 15 minute podcast on it hopefully it prompts people out there to think about their own circumstances. Maybe there isn't a magic uh, bullet that's gonna see them paying no interest ever on their loan, but it got people talking and hopefully it gets people out there thinking about what they can do to get a better rate, look after their cash flow and take control of their situation. Uh, that's 12 minutes, Ben. You anything yeah, more? No, screw the bank. We hope you enjoyed today's episode. If you're keen to understand more about how financial advice could benefit you, follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter at Burke Britain FP or Google Burke Britain Financial Partners. Check out our client reviews, testimonials, and make a time to meet one of our certified financial planners by clicking book now on our website. Thanks for listening. Any information contained in this podcast is of a general nature only. No account was taken as to the objectives, financial situation, or needs of any particular person. Therefore, before making any decision, listeners should consider the appropriateness of any information with regard to their particular objective, financial situation, needs, and seek independent advice from a licensed professional specific to their circumstances. All right. That translates to don't be a moron and act on what some random person says on a podcast. Take personal responsibility, do your homework, ask questions and speak to an actual human that knows what they're talking about before you do anything. PP Financial Solutions Proprietary Limited Trading is Burke Britain Financial Partners are authorised representatives of AMP Financial Planning Limited AFS license number 232706.